Good morning, good afternoon and good evening and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Alpha Core number one. Uh, so this is part of the Ripperverse from Eric July, the YouTuber and I want to say now like comic sensation. Uh, he's he's started this franchise with, with Ice and he started the Ripperverse and it has grown exponentially. It has been amazing to see uh, as someone very much on the outside, someone that's looking um, at Eric July's videos, really agreeing with everything that he's been he's been putting out, and then and then seeing him in his words put his money where his mouth was, and actually create a company and follow it through. And it's amazing that there's there was obviously going to be challenges with with starting up a business, especially something like this that that is so. It's so well loved by people around the world, the comic book medium, and he was obviously a fan as well. And I say was because he's he's created these rules for his universe about continuity, about respecting the customer that really just feels it feels like there should be it should be throughout all of comics, to be completely honest with you. So it's amazing to see this this business of his grow and these comics come out that are absolutely fantastic they really really are i said for isom number one and two it was a it was a great story i i can't wait to read the third one and i know he's been playing around with the idea about bringing in some external people uh to to sort of fill up the universe to to take some of his characters and, and run with them and this is where we come to alpha core number one uh which is the first issue that isn't done by eric july he's still uh, an editor <clears throat> um but from what what we see from it's chuck dixon who wrote it wasn't it chuck dixon yeah <laughs> um from what what we see from chuck dixon in in a letter at the end that was incredibly heartfelt to to read and it, kind of a bit cheeky in certain in certain places he really does respect eric july for what he's done and he he understands that he's he's not going to mess around with the characters as much um, but he is, he's going to sort of play with them a little bit, but he has said that Eric has, has kind of said, look, do, do what you want, you know, let's, let's have fun with this. So it's, it's really interesting to see someone that's come in that, that can literally do whatever he wants with, with the characters, with, with the world, you know, I, as far as I'm aware with DC and Marvel, Writers come in and they're being told you have to stick within these parameters. You have to stick within this this timeline or this period. This is this is what's going around across Marvel continuity at the moment. So you need to play around around that. Or is it really seems like Eric has has told Chuck like, look, these are the characters, go. Um, so it's it's really it's really amazing to see that a writer can come in and just have that kind of freedom, and um, to see what he's done was. It was so enjoyable to read. It really, really was. And I have to say, first of all, these comics are not the standard Marvel DC thing of, well, I think they're what, like 20 something pages now for Marvel and DC? That They're not. I think these are almost like 40 pages long. They feel like a bumper issue and that's every single one. There is a premium product here. Don't, <coughs> don't get me wrong. There is a definitely a premium price, if, especially for someone like myself who is outside of America that I'm paying quite a lot in the in the shipping fees. But I've always said this on this channel. If you have a good product, I'm more than happy to pay the price and I will shout about it because I do not want to read stuff that's that's written poorly and 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 feels less in quality. And these books don't have that at all. They are incredible paper. They are fantastically written and everything is presented to its to its, its highest possible standard. And I really do believe that they they earn that that kind of cover price. They really do. But let's talk a little bit about the story. <clears throat> uh, Alpha Core is a, a kind of a team that it's almost like they're not really set up at the moment. Um, there's there's three of them, two of them. I don't know if they're married. I don't know if they had a relationship, either previous relationship or in a relationship. But there's some sort of dynamic between the two of them. Um, but Alpha Cora are, are what they're seen as the the last the last resort. You know, if there is a situation going on, they are like the superhero police. You know, if if the regular police can handle it, they'll handle it. But if there's someone that's what do they call them? Uh, accepts 
uh, if there's someone that's like a super person, they will get the call to, to come in and, and deal with them. And it, it's amazing what Chuck Dixon has has done with this because he's he's written in some it's like some corporate espionage stuff within it. And it's 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 actually amazing. You've got you've got two characters who could be seen as the uh, the Lex Luthor kind of characters. They're multimillionaires. They can do what they want, but they're a bit shady and they pay people to do things to really separate themselves from everything. So you, it seems like the, the dynamic is very much like they're going to be the the sort of the corporate villains, as it were, pulling all the strings. And Alpha Core are, are going to be the ones that are trying to save the city. And yeah, I mean, it's at, at times it might have been a little bit hard to follow. I have to admit, just because there's there's so many characters that are introduced. Now I know in I saw one they introduced the, the Alpha Core just very briefly. This goes into a little bit more detail about Alpha Core members, about the city themselves, about I believe that's the, the district, the the uh, was it the the DA. There's the uh, I think that's all the mayors in it. it. There's there's so many characters in it. I don't know if they're going to be uh, mainstay characters or if it's just going to be mostly the Alpha Core and then the then the corporate overlords. But there's so much going on that I did have to tend to like flick back a few pages and go, is that person the same? Yeah, just the same person as that. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, but with with that in mind, it's still an incredible read. It really is, and I I, I think it's it's just it's completely blown up because I believe they're on like their third printing already. <clears throat> and I am like I said, I am all here for the rip of us. I really am. I think everything that they stand for is is something that comics should should aspire to. It it really is, and I I really do hope that. The, the, the rip of us essentially will be like the gold standard for a lot of people everything they're doing is it just seems immaculate and i am really looking forward to not just the next isom written by eric july but i'm looking forward to seeing who else he brings in we already know who the next creative team are gonna be on which character they're writing so I, i'll leave that just until until I get it, until I can read it, because I'm really excited to see where this goes. But I think what they've done so far has been absolutely incredible. I cannot wait to read more, and long may it continue, as far as I'm concerned. But please, if you have read either ISO, uh, ISO uh, ISOM or Alpha Core, please let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, because that really does help me out. And I'll see you all in the next video.